Hi guys, Harry here. Welcome to Scrap Science. So this video is going to be quite a bit different to most of the other videos on this channel. What it is, is a video that we filmed last year as an entry for an engineering competition. What we did was, as you'll see in the video, um, manufacture a microfluidic circuit that is capable of performing a simple acid-based titration. And now that the competition is over, we thought that the video was worth posting. Maybe you'll be interested. Anyway, on to the video. So this is our entry to the 2019 Engineering Challenge. I would call it the titration station. What it basically allows us to do is to perform a semi-accurate titration of an acid or a base uh, without a lab setup or expensive glassware. All right, so to explain how all this works, uh, We'll go over each of the parts that we've got here. Uh, we've got all of our power lines coming in from the side here. Uh, what that's powering, we've got a, if I take the lid off for now, we have a Raspberry Pi, which allows us to run the whole thing using an app or a website on a phone. Uh, we have a Arduino, which is pretty much just running these driver circuits, uh, which run the stepper motors which we've got back here. These stepper motors are uh, used to empty syringes with these syringe pumps. Uh, so what these syringes will be filled with is one of them will have a standard solution and one of them will have a titrate in it and then what we can do with the drivers and the stepper motors is empty these syringes at a very controllable rate. With the syringes we'll plug them into these tubes here and this thing, which we've laser cut, is a grid of microfluidic channels which is designed to create an even gradient of concentrations of both the titrate and the standard solution across the output line here. Before we explain how this can actually be used to do a proper titration, I uh, thought it would be best to just show you how this gradient generator works using some just food colouring in water. We've got a blue solution and a green solution. Uh, we can pass both of these through our gradient generator and we should get a generated output line from green to blue and we should get an even distribution between those two. So now what we're going to do is we're going to fill these syringes with um, our different coloured solutions. So fill this up and that's good to go. So we've got our syringes and what we have to do now is just connect these straight on to our input tubes for the gradient mixer. So what we need to do now is stick the syringes into the syringe pumps. Alright, so you can see now, if we have a look from the side, we've got our syringes down there in our syringe pumps ready they're connected up to our gradient generator uh, and they're all wired up, ready to go. So we'll get the app set up and then we can actually run the device. So now we've got the app set up on the phone. What we need to do is just put in a rate for the syringe pumps to pump at. It's 10 milliliters per minute. So we'll set that and then easy enough we can just start. should start flowing through the gradient generator creating a perfect gradient of uh, green to uh, green on this end green to blue as you should be able to see on the output now as you can see we've got a really nice gradient from blue down this end all the way up to a pure green on this end. Obviously the green dye is a little bit stronger than the blue stuff, but we do have a nice gradient nonetheless. So now before we go and actually do a proper titration with this and explain how it can actually be used for a titration, uh, we thought we'd go over all of our prototype designs. So we knew we needed to make microfluidics and our first design uh, involved this silicon gel. Uh, we had a few tests with that and we realised that bubbles and low resolution just wouldn't let that work. So we 
scrapped that idea and moved on to 3D printing. So for 3D printing, we actually ran into a few of the same problems as before when we tried to print uh, really small channels, which is what we need for microfluidics. Uh, we couldn't achieve a high enough resolution. Uh, we could only print like really big channels. Uh, also, the 3D prints wouldn't come out great. They'd kind of be jagged around the edges. And mainly, we weren't able to print channels that were embedded in the material. We could only print grooves on the surface. So after 3D printing, uh, we had the idea to actually use just the surface grooves uh, in that we could just put another piece of acrylic over the top of those grooves and they'd form uh, like an inner channel which could be used for the microfluidics. Uh, but instead of 3D printing, because we did still have those problems with uh, low accuracy and it wouldn't print out right sometimes, we decided that a much better alternative would be to laser cut these channels into a piece of acrylic. So then we went ahead and did some extensive testing with the laser cutter, uh, actually determining whether we could cut channels that were small enough in just the surface of a piece of acrylic. And then we determined the best power and speed settings to actually cut channels that were small enough to determine, like, can we cut straight lines? Can we cut corners for the microfluidics? Can we cut complicated zigzags or networks? Can we make sure that uh, the, the channels can connect to an input or output hole. So after all that testing, we decided to cut a full test piece of the titration uh, gradient generator. And in testing this piece, uh, we found that it actually worked perfectly. Uh, after putting a little bit of tape over the, the surface of this to keep uh, all of the, the grooves, make them channels instead of just grooves in the top of the acrylic and pressing another piece of acrylic on top, uh, we found that it created a perfect gradient and worked really well. So all we needed to do was make the channels a little bit smaller and make the gradient generator a whole lot bigger. This was our final test cut piece. Uh, it's got the exact same dimensions as the actual gradient generator in the titration station. Uh, this was really just to prove that we could cut the channels this close together in the layout that we'd planned. So this was our final design for the gradient generator. It's cut on a really big piece of acrylic and we have a lot of channels in there. So we did a fair bit of testing to make sure that uh, we got an even gradient on the output. So now to explain how a microfluidic setup like this can actually be used for a titration of an acid or a base, we'll start out by assuming that we know the concentration of a standard solution that's being inputted to one of these lines. So now if we assume that the uh, titrate has a concentration that is exactly the same as the standard solution. Obviously, uh, if we have a bit of phenylphthalein indicator in both solutions, uh, we'll have basic outputs on one side and acidic outputs on the other, and the colour change from a clear to a purple indication from the phenylphthalein will occur right in the middle, and that will be our telltale that the standard solution is exactly the same concentration as the titrate. So now, assuming that we have an even gradient from one side of the generator to the other, uh, if we now have a, let's say, the standard solution of acid and the titrate of base, uh, if we have the base being twice as concentrated as the acid, uh, we'll end up with a colour change from clear to purple being uh, a third of the way along the output because the acid to the base is a 1 to 2 ratio, so it should occur really a third of the way along. Now this kind of ratio between the standard and the titrate can be expanded across all 20 of the outputs and all of that ratio calculations and stuff is handled by the app. So all you need to do is type in, you can see we've put these little numbers in here, all you need to do is type in the number which the colour change occurred on from clear to purple and then the concentration of the standard solution and that'll calculate the concentration of your titrate for you. So to start an actual titration with this thing, what we need is a standard solution. In this case, uh, this is potassium hydrogen phthalate, which is our acid. And we've got our unknown solution of sodium hydroxide. Uh, we actually know the concentration of this to be approximately 0.1 molar and the concentration of this is exactly 0.1 molar. So what we should see on the device 
is a color change right in the middle of the gradient generator. The first thing we've got to do is um, add a few drops of phenylphthalein indicator to each and you can see instantly the sodium hydroxide solution goes purple and the acid remains clear. So that'll act as our indicator of the color change at the end of the gradient. So we've reset the syringe pumps down in the machine and we've got the titrate and the standard solution loaded in the syringes. So all this left to do is now run the device. And you can see that on one side of the machine have pink outputs and on the other side we have perfectly clear outputs. And so the junction between those two you can see occurs on number 10. So we'll go ahead and look at the app again. So to make the app perform the calculation all we need to do is type in the concentration of the standard solution. This is 0.1 molar. Uh, and then we need to also type in uh, the number which the color change occurred on. So that was number 10. And we can calculate and we can see that the concentration of our sodium hydroxide solution must be approximately 0.1 molar uh, and must be between 0.09 molar and 0.11 molar. So a quick note on accuracy. Uh, the design that we've got right now with 20 outputs uh, can measure the concentration of an acid or a base to within 10%. And that can actually easily be scaled up. Well, this gradient generator can be made bigger to get a much, much higher accuracy uh, in terms of the concentration of the titrate. Right now what we're doing is running it backwards. It's really easy to do with the app once again. Uh, this is just so we can reload the syringes for the next titration. And we're now set up for a second titration. This time uh, the titrate, the sodium hydroxide solution, we've made up to be approximately twice the concentration as last time. So hopefully the, uh, the colour change position will be somewhere closer to the left side here. What's really good about this design also is the fact that you don't actually need to wash it out with water before you do your next titration. You can actually just run it and it'll flush itself out as you do the next titration. So once again, we've got the app ready and we can run the device again. Already you can see that the pink outputs are coming a lot further across this end. So you can see here that the color change now occurs on the sixth junction. So if we come over to the app, we can now uh, type in six, which we can then calculate. And what we get, as you can see, is an average of a 0.25 molar solution of our sodium hydroxide. Uh, the minimum value we've calculated to be 0.22 molar and the maximum being 0.28. This aligns perfectly with what we actually measured the uh, concentration of the sodium hydroxide to be, which is around 0.23 molar. So you can tell that it is quite accurate. So there we go, a quick and easy titration with the portable titration station. It only takes a couple of minutes to uh, fill up syringes with your titrate and your standard solution and then stick them in the syringe pumps and just turn it on through the app. We get a relatively accurate measurement, uh, accurate to around 10%. Now a titration design like this uh, can actually be used in many areas from like wastewater treatment to like a standard lab titration. We can actually also do redox titrations with this so that means you'd actually be able to measure the amount of glucose in someone's blood or someone's iodine levels really easily with not too much modification to the design. So a major part of this project was actually designing the microfluidics for the gradient generator of the titration machine. 
Uh, mainly, this involved just coming up with a way to cheaply manufacture uh, really tiny microfluidics channels, which is quite a challenge, but we found that uh, laser cutting them really worked well, it was really cheap, and was really quick to create really large uh, patterns. Our new method of fabricating microfluidic circuits really opens up uh, the construction of these things to people with low budgets, limited materials, things like that. What it really does is allows people access to uh, designing their own microfluidic circuits, just like the one we've got here. And all in all, I think it's a pretty successful uh, product. We've overcome all of the design challenges for the microfluidics and the actual titration. We've produced a very usable product, which is hopefully very useful.